Flooding south of the Triangle is keeping emergency crews very busy tonight after heavy downpours triggered major flooding in southern pines. As sunlight slants through the longleaf pines and the broad, sandy swells of the Carolina Sandhills undulate in slow, silent waves, it's easy to imagine this land as eternally placid, green, soft, and memoryless. Water tumbles lazily through cypress swamps. Fossils lie scattered in gently eroding banks. Locals recall hurricanes and summer heat, the crackle of pine needles underfoot, but not the fury of ancient fire. Yet recently, beneath that quiet veneer, traces have surfaced, subtle but unmistakable, of a cataclysm older and vaster than the creation of the Atlantic itself, where one might expect only echoes of Civil War skirmishes or the footsteps of long-departed megafauna. Geologists have unearthed vestiges of an eruption so immense so violent that it altered the very bedrock. In the sand hills of North Carolina, 240 miles from the nearest modern coastline, scientists have discovered unmistakable signs of an ancient tsunami. Yeah, you know, the Sand Hills saw widespread flooding. Cross Creek, where I am now, is just one of the places. But the good news is the water has receded. Its force carved deep into the bones of the land. But the evidence reaches further tracing not just a single disaster, but a saga that began over a hundred million years ago. A super eruption, releasing energies on a scale rivaling the greatest cataclysms in Earth's history. And if the clues traced by seismic scars and long-cooled magma hold true, the story isn't simply a relic for museums and geology texts. It is a living warning a hidden script written in stone, reminding us that beneath the tranquil face of the South lies a restless, unseen shadow. What does it mean to walk atop such ancient, slumbering violence? Could the Sand Hills, a landscape more often compared to the Sahara than to the calderas of Yellowstone, be the scar left behind by a supervolcano? And what now slumbers beneath the Carolina dawn? Ripples in the sand the tsunami that should not be. Begin in the heart of the sand hills, where summer winds stir sand into low, rolling hills, and the coast feels as distant as myth. Local lore spins tales of weird geology, of rivers that wind against expectation, of soils so pure and fine they're prized across states. For most, these are quirks, oddities, not scars. But this changed when scientists scrutinized the land's deeper evidence a site more than 200 miles away from the nearest present coastline bears scars of a massive tsunami, evidence clear in its composition. Deep within the sandy layers, geologists found marine gravels, shells, and glassy fragments, deposits characteristic of oceanic violence. There, amidst terrestrial soils, were indicators of sediment moved at the scale of seconds, not millennia. Ocean debris thrust far inland by waves surpassing any hurricane surge. These implications were staggering. Oceanographers, climatologists, and geophysicists converged, studying angles of deposition, mineral mixes, and fossil orientations. What could hurl the Atlantic this far inland and mark the tectonically stable heart of the Carolinas with such force? What single event could redraw landscapes and futures, probing further Seismic imaging revealed the land's deeper secrets. Researchers found layers of fused volcanic glass and thick sills of ancient hardened magma beneath the sandhills, volcanic breccia mingled with marine sediments. The region, far removed from active plate boundaries or rift valleys, confessed through its rocks. A super eruption had torn through here a release of energy sufficient to trigger oceanic upheaval unmatched elsewhere on the eastern seaboard. But this is where the mystery deepens. This wasn't supposed to be possible. The eastern United States is considered geologically quiet. No active subduction zones, no major fault lines comparable to the Pacific Rim. So how then did enough energy erupt in this inland region to send an ocean crashing hundreds of miles westward some researchers now believe the cause wasn't just volcanic. It may have been compounded by an ancient meteor strike or a series of cascading crustal failures. 
One compelling theory suggests that a sudden collapse of an underwater fault system, previously undetected off the Atlantic coast, amplified the tsunami wave after the inland eruption destabilized the crust. In essence, it wasn't just a ripple effect, it was a geological chain reaction. What if this wasn't an isolated cataclysm, but part of a pattern we've yet to fully understand? Satellite gravimetry and LIDAR imaging are now being used to scan for similar inland tsunami signatures across the southeastern U.S. And early data hints that this may not be the only inland zone shaped by ancient waves. Newly mapped regions in Georgia and even Tennessee are showing faint signs of similar deposits, sedimentary fingerprints that don't belong. Could it be that the Sand Hills tsunami was not a one-time anomaly, but part of a forgotten chapter in North America's geological history, one of fire, water, and sudden collapse? Are these ripples in the sand mere memories or warnings echoing across eons, urging us to look deeper before history repeats itself? Unlikely Origins the Sand Hills Secret Furnace. Behind every legend is a kernel of truth, and nowhere is this clearer than in the tales of buried volcanoes in the Carolinas. The legend of the Concord Volcano, it turns out, is only partly true. The town is uniquely situated on an ancient, now solidified pool of magma, not a conventional volcano, but rather a relic. No crater, no ridges, no plume. For years, these were dismissed as stories, Scientists, however, wanted proof. Beneath Concord and the folds of the sand hills, investigators found something unexpected. Not an extinct volcano, but a vast pool of solidified magma, ancient, inert, cooled by a hundred million years of silence. This was not an ordinary volcanic cone, but instead the fossilized relic of a vast, powerful volcanic system, one whose scale dwarfed any present-day mountain in the southeast. A recent study traced this evidence back some 120 million years to a super eruption, not merely a localized volcano, but a continental scale event. Ancient basalts layered among deep sea sediments and the peculiar geometry of the subsurface all pointed to the prehistoric presence of a true geological monster, a super volcano, its roots still entwined beneath contemporary river, forest, and field. Through magnetic resonance surveys, geochemists detected unusual concentrations of iron, nickel, and chromium in the surrounding rock, elements that hint at a once hyperactive magma chamber. Gravity anomalies confirm the presence of dense, ancient igneous formations far beneath the surface, frozen in time. Thermochronology revealed that this system cooled slowly over millions of years, suggesting the chamber extended for miles in every direction but if there's no visible caldera, no scorched rock above, how did people even know to tell the story in the first place? This is the real mystery. Local indigenous oral traditions speak of fire in the ground, and colonial era folklore describes warm earth that never froze. It's as if some memory of the land's ancient rage lingered, encoded in cultural memory, waiting for science to confirm it. And now, science is not just confirming, but expanding the tail. Across the region, smaller plutons, frozen magma bodies, are being identified, each possibly tied to a single titanic event in Earth's past. Some researchers now speculate that what lies beneath Concord is merely the exposed edge of something much vaster, a failed rift zone or a volcanic arc that never fully breached the surface. The Carolinas, long thought to be tectonically dull, may in fact sit atop one of the oldest and most massive volcanic scars in eastern North America. It's a powerful reminder. Landscapes most ordinary, placid, rolling, open, can be the resting ground for ancient catastrophes. When describing these depths, geologists use phrases like magma pool and geologic furnace, hinting at a time when mountains could rise overnight and the planet's surface could buckle. The sand hills, so often associated with slow erosion and tranquility, are in truth the embers of an ancient inferno. Can a land so calm truly hold the signature of such profound upheaval? Might that silence above conceal more than we care to imagine below? The Anatomy of a Lost Cataclysm To imagine a supervolcano 
beneath these gentle hills is to ask, what shape did this ancient disaster take? How do you visualize a ghost or measure a roar heard before the first flower bloomed? The answer is drawn from the rocks, a diary locked beneath root and river. Here, researchers find volcanic glass, flash frozen from magma, exposed to unimaginable heat, then rapidly cooled. There, veins of basalt reach upward like ancient skeletons. Marine fossils mixed with terrestrial rock mark the sign of a pulse, a cataclysm that churned sea and soil together in moments. Each specimen tells a story. Calcium and magnesium ratios in shells, trace elements forged only in volcanic crucibles, the orientation of shocked quartz. These clues wind the timeline back 120 million years. They show not a neat caldera, but a sprawling volcanic field, multitudes of vents, fissures, sills, and sheets stretching beneath the eastern shoulder of the continent. Such an eruption, though possibly drawn out, unleashed ash and gas over a vast area. When the volcano convulsed, it sent shockwaves not only through local stone, but also across the primordial sea, provoking tsunamis centuries before the Atlantic took its modern form. As rain and time slowly healed the land, the signs of eruption faded, buried under the centuries' quiet work of wind and water. Yet, in the sandhills, the ancient scar lingers. Beneath every sandy ridge and winding stream, the pattern endures, a story too powerful to be erased by mere time. If each grain of sand is a survivor, what stories are caught in the silence of stone? Super volcanoes and the myth of safety. Catastrophe is easier to imagine as something far away. We mark the ring of fire, trace fault lines out west, and scan the horizon of Yellowstone for hints of trouble. The southeast seems remote from such peril, pine, farm, an old land's slow settling, or so we believe. The evidence of a supervolcano in the Carolinas shatters that narrative. With the bones uncovered, notions of safety are forced to evolve. In a place where eruptions are not a modern threat and earthquakes are gentle, the ground still holds the imprint of latent catastrophe. The Sandhills supervolcano is a geologic reminder. Time and silence may blanket disaster, but never erase it. Compare the Sand Hills scar to better known volcanic fields. At Yellowstone, restless magma is watched by satellite and by seismograph, its shifting geysers and swelling ground forming a spectacle of anticipation. In the Pacific, scientists monitor Axial Seamount, an undersea volcano near Oregon, where fresh seismic activity and swelling ground suggest an eruption could occur sometime this year or next. There, hundreds of small earthquakes per day signal a rhythmic geology and the world waits. These places take their turns as symbols of risk, but the Carolinas have offered a tranquility so deep we forgot the land could ever burn. The reminder, in geology, safety is never more than a temporary reprieve. The Sandhills' quiet is not promise, but pause. When the land feels safest, is it merely a lull between stories, an interval before memory, buried deep, returns to the surface? The Language of Stone, Reading the Ancient Record For scientists, the Sand Hill's secret is more than a curiosity. It's a call to read the land differently. Each sedimentary layer, every mineral inclusion, becomes a chapter in an ancient tale, hundreds of millions of years in the making. This is no simple map making. Seismic imaging shows where rock is cracked and fused, revealing the architecture of disaster. Deep drills pull out cores, each meter a page in prehistory. They find cross-hatched patterns of cooling, lenses where sand is fused like glass, and pockets where gravel was shaped under sudden pressure. Chemical analysis provides the punctuation, isotopes, trace elements, and volcanic markers are compared with those of super eruptions worldwide, from the flood basalts of India and Siberia to Yellowstone's restless caldera. The verdict, the Carolina event, was immense, with echoes and parallels across the planet's greatest volcanic fields. In the marine gravels, so far inland from any ancient shoreline, lies further evidence. Scientists reconstruct past shorelines, model tsunami heights, and chart how ocean water invaded what would one day be pine-covered North Carolina. So, the old legends gain new resonance, 
not as tall tales, but as fossil memories. The so-called Concord Volcano is no myth, but a relic, a pool of magma that hardened in the deep. It's not an ongoing hazard, but a clue to a time when the Carolinas stood at the axis of planetary change. How would the South story change if every grain of Earth's story were read aloud? Connections across Eon, linking the Carolinas to the global fire. The Carolina supervolcano isn't a local oddity. It's a chapter in Earth's wider history. Consider the time, 120 million years ago, in the Cretaceous. The continents shifted and rifted. The Atlantic was only beginning to widen. Around the world, supervolcanoes erupted, releasing magma and gases that could alter climate and remake living landscapes. Trace elements within ancient rock. Chemical fingerprints reveal kinship to global cataclysms. The tsunami imprinted in local sand echoes, patterns found in other ancient disasters, were volcanic phase changes, sometimes more than tectonics alone, drove ocean waves far inland. In this sense, the Carolina supervolcano is no anomaly. It's a signal in a planetary chorus, a reminder that every region, even those now tranquil, has danced upon the edge of Earth's power. The aftermath may have shaped river paths, new soil, and the pattern of today's southern forests and fields. Vigilance, memory, and the true shape of stability. The recurring question, as discoveries mount, is always, what does this mean for us? Does the ghost volcano below the Carolinas present a modern risk? Is the Sand Hills story one of warning or only of wonder? Geologists answer with cautious relief, the supervolcano beneath the region is an ancient relic, not a present danger. Its magma has long cooled, sealed away by tens of millions of years. Today, there are no signs of heat or upheaval, no swelling domes or swarms of earthquakes. Unlike the axial seamount, which is currently monitored for heightened seismicity and swelling that may signal an imminent eruption, or Yellowstone, where a magma cap is watched with advanced instruments, the sand hills remain quiet settled, their eruption finished before the age of mammals began. But caution is its own inheritance. Human memory is brief, geologic time relentless. The seeming tranquility of the land is built on catastrophe and renewal. Old faults sometimes reactivate, and the land can shift anew if the ages align. So the findings shape infrastructure and planning. Carrying the flame, the invitation of ancient ash. In the hush of a sand hill's evening, as shadows stretch beneath old pines and the air thrums with cicadas and the scent of warm sand, it's easy to forget the revelations hidden below. Land gives little away. Rivers wind on, unaware of the fire that once scoured their bed. Only the faint mineral tang after rain hints at a history so deep it almost slips the mind. But those who have traced the story, from marine gravels to solidified magma, know that the tale of the supervolcano is less about endings than about a call to wonder. This buried story is an invitation to humility, to curiosity, to awe. To walk these sands is to step atop the memory of an earth far wilder than today, each footfall echoing chapters few alive ever imagined. Research will continue. New drill cores will be studied. Seismic maps will flicker with new discoveries. Arguments will flare as geologists fine-tune their models striving to understand how and why super eruptions ripple across continents, how tsunamis ride so far, why the world's scars are both unique and yet familiar. Each breakthrough will remind us how frail our sense of stability truly is. Someday, perhaps, a child will find a shell among the sand hills pine and ask how it arrived so far from the sea. The answer, a simple but deep truth, is that every piece is an inheritance hard won by ancient fire and tumult. So, as night falls across the Carolina sand, remember the supervolcano hidden below. Its fire is long spent, but its signature is deep. Every landscape we call calm wears Earth's patience like a shroud, hiding scars, wisdom, and the promise of change. The sand hills, for all their silence, will never be mute. Their history, uncovered piece by piece, is now part of the world's ongoing story. What other secrets lie beneath our feet, unseen, undreamt, waiting for their discovery. Only the earth knows, and the earth will keep its secrets until summoned anew, by science, by chance, or by awe, to tell its tale once again.